Hey friends, Brian here. I've actually been doing some research on dinosaurs and been finding some pretty interesting things. For one, there's a rock layer on Australia and they found dinosaur tracks there. And uh, they say it's a, it was a stampede uh, because you see the tracks and you see the length between the tracks. It looks like they're running, right? But what you know, upon further research they found that they're too far apart meaning that they must have been likely carried by water over some distance you know as much as six inches to five feet uh, of water carrying these dinosaurs along uh, in what they call a fluvial environment or a river environment but to me that looks like um well actually this this rock layer is pretty spread out it couldn't have just formed by a smaller river it's a widespread rock layer looks like uh could have been in a flood maybe and then add on top of that in china they found places footprints of dinosaurs uh, long neck dinosaurs where the hind limbs are only found as footprints you don't see the footprints of the front limbs uh, for these dinosaurs so maybe that's like the 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 front didn't push through but the back did push through and in fact they say there's more of a sandy layer uh, underneath and maybe it was the mud over top that they were kind of breaking through that crust you know kind of like when you you know you might make it some ways across a, a, a surface and then like one foot you know breaks through uh, whether ice or snow or, or mud or whatever there um, but again think about that this is mud covering sand this is stuff that has to form quickly the same thing for those australian footprints has to form quickly right and another interesting thing is that there have been dinosaur footprints found uh, that's just primarily the front feet that have been found for some dinosaurs this is in uh, the united states they found front feet uh, only and uh, which is weird because um, and so could they have walked on their hands doing handstands or no I mean it looks like probably uh, they might have been in water possibly up to their shoulders and which the buoyancy of, of these creatures would actually pick up their back legs so that they'd be kind of walking and able to reach the ground with their front limbs and kind of push them, pull themselves along like that with just their front limbs. Um, and in fact, they found different trackways and the middle trackway they found had smaller footprints and uh, fainter, more shallow footprints. And so uh, maybe the, a smaller dinosaur that was struggling to, uh, to make it along in, in the, uh, the rising flood water or something there. Um, so what we're seeing, I mean, we're seeing my favorite dinosaurs, long neck dinosaurs, looks like evidence, good evidence that they're wading, swimming, stampeding in mud, has to be filled in quickly, fits with a global flood perspective in that. And in case you're curious for more, um, uh, even more research, you know, evolutionists, they assume these things to be just rare floods that come across and, and wipe uh, through the, here burying these dinosaurs quickly or the tracks quickly or whatever it floods maybe of you know once every hundred years once every 500 years big floods that you know you don't expect very often but they they you know of course they have a lot of time with millions and billions of years they would say for these floods to every once in a while happen um, and they say a lot of times it's a fluvial environment that's burying these these uh, creatures these uh, river environments but uh, they're huge widespread areas not river environments in fact when we look at a lot of the dinosaurs that have been found uh, we've found a lot of large bone beds or huge dinosaur graveyards containing thousands of dinosaurs that indicates catastrophic actions catastrophic activities in fact Montana you have 10,000 duck billed dinosaurs in just a small area we tend to see these things as disarticulated that they're disassociated they're oriented the skeletons the bones are oriented east to west in this case uh, indicating a debris flow 
Um, in fact, uh, some experts say, how could any mudslide, no matter how catastrophic, have the force to take a two or three ton animal that had just died and smash it around so much that its femur, still embedded in the flesh of its thigh, split lengthwise? Lengthwise? What? Uh, other dinosaur quarries uh, are, have been found, especially in the United, Western United States, but also worldwide. And uh, another expert says, you know, it's like you tend to see these bones piled up, piled in like log, piled in like logs in a jam. Oh. And then another expert here says, and anyone who cherishes notions that evolution is always slow and continuous will be shaken out of his beliefs by breakfast bench or Como Bluff and other geological markers of cataclysm. So he's seen, okay, these huge floods, right? And then uh, yet another thing, dinosaur eggs. Dinosaur eggs have been found in Mongolia, uh, a, lot, a bunch of these nests with a bunch of dinosaur eggs in them. And in fact, they found a breeding oviraptoroid, oviraptorid uh, dinosaur that is actually on one of the nests, you know, a brooding uh, dinosaur on its nest. And they say it must have been buried quickly, violently in like a powerful sandstorm. A powerful sandstorm. That's, that's pretty crazy. It couldn't, I wonder, could it have been a watery sand wave, you know, washing up and over the land here? In fact, when we talk about di baby dinosaurs, they're very rare. Baby dinosaur fossils, that is, are very rare. Why? Why do you think that is? In fact, here's an, another expert says, as succeeding years yielded no other major finds of baby dinosaurs, the question grew in importance. If you think about it, more dinosaurs should have died young than died old. That's what happens with most animals. And the high infant mortality should have produced a lot of fossils over the course of 140 million years. A lot of fossils that had never been found. A lot of fossils that had never been found. Okay, that seems like a, often the case with uh, the fossil record for the evolutionist. We don't have the fossils needed, right? So why don't we have these baby dinosaurs? Um, and in fact, one of the things about these bone beds, these fossil graveyards of dinosaurs, is that you have, they tend to be monospecific, or one species of dinosaur in these large herds, in these large bone beds. And one example we don't find the baby dinosaurs along with in these herds is uh, possibly that they could not keep up with the fleeing herd and perished quickly. Their bones were not fossilized probably because they were too fragile. Uh, I think that very likely might be the case. Isn't that interesting? The, the baby dinosaurs, we don't see them in these herds. They probably didn't keep up in the floods, right? And in fact, when we talk about these herds of animals maybe, you know, escaping the rising floodwaters, uh, we do also see evidence of scavenging. And so evolutionists will say, see, that can't be evidence of a flood environment. They get buried in a flood. How do you get them scavenged uh, by these, you know, bone marks and other things in these uh, in these specimens. But that's likely because, you know, you have during the worldwide flood, the sloshing of the flood waters, and it's going to slosh up and back and up and back and probably expose some of the higher layers of land at different times during the flood. And that's where you're going to have the congregating of these dinosaurs in herds uh, on these, you know, exposed areas. That's where you're going to have soft uh, layers of sand, you know, and mud that they're running across, uh, being carried across, being floated through, um, and, and filled in quickly with mud. That seems to make a lot of sense. In fact, we have, they call them mega track sites, uh, especially over the Western U S but all over the world. Uh, and some people even call them dinosaur freeways. I'll, I'll mention that in just a sec, but an example of that is Southeast Utah. In the Entrada sandstone, they find uh, a large carnivorous theropod dinosaur tracks there. And, uh, but this is Entrada sandstone. They, evolutionists assume this is a, a desert environment. 
how do you have such big dinosaurs in a desert environment surviving for you know long periods of time that doesn't make sense for them i think it's probably these uh, areas that the flood comes up and down and up and down and so uh, it's exposed here where the dinosaurs are still trying to run across and to high ground and whatever um, during the flood period in fact the, uh, there's places from say northeast New Mexico to northwest Colorado where uh, they call it a freeway a trackway where you have these tracks and they only find two types of dinosaurs in this specific trackway at the specific time um, geologically speaking why only two well that's kind of funny I think that's just one period during the flood that was exposed briefly right oh and in fact the tracks tend to cap the sedimentary units and they tend to form on flat strata or flat um, in the rocks in the way that these tracks tend to form it tends to be flat layering um, and so um, we don't see the hilly topography that would form over long ages of time oh, tracks tend to form in straight lines where you know animals tend to meander and tender you know scatter this way and that way and whatever um they tend to be all moving kind of in in straight lines like they're something is forcing them that way the, the big uh mud waters that are coming at them right um and there's nearly complete absence of tracks of like creatures like the stegosaurus ankylosaurus and uh, ceratopsian dinosaurs these larger dinosaurs that you can imagine would be slower and probably didn't make as many of those tracks trying to escape the, the rising floodwaters. Um, that's interesting too, isn't it? And uh, we have fossils available, but uh, a lot of fossils of those creatures available, but no tracks. And I wanted to add one more uh, example of, of another article that I, I read from this, this example, where in China, you have 25 dinosaurs that were found, and actually they were young dinosaurs. They're immature dinosaurs that were found. They're actually oriented in generally the same direction. Um, they're very well preserved. Uh, we don't see any evidence of decay or rotting before they were buried. In fact, they see evidence that's so well preserved that they must have been buried quickly um, before any of that aging or, or deterioration could happen uh, and it says they're they're buried in kind of lifelike crouching posture with limbs plunging down into the mud and uh, and hind legs often still bent indicating like a struggle to escape possibly this mud right possibly could be an explanation um, and the evidence in this mud it looks like the the sediment the mud is is twisted there's no churning up of or worm tracks or burrows of other creatures or plants uh, so it looks like this sediment formed quickly and for the evolutionists they're they're shocked they're like well we don't usually find these smaller dinosaurs uh these smaller creatures in so much mud you know and this is a desert environment for them too where they're expecting a desert uh scenario for these creatures but how do you get so much mud to bury these dinosaurs all at once i think it actually points to here might be evidence of those younger immature dinosaurs that were able or unable to keep up with the herd of larger adult dinosaurs um, that got buried in in this first uh part of the mud and and then you know then we find these other herds of dinosaurs after so with all that being said guys Looks like we've got a lot of good evidence from dinosaur fossils, from dinosaur tracks that, man, these things were buried in mud pretty quickly, fits perfectly with a worldwide flood scenario um, that, just like the Bible says, and in all of that, that tells us, hey, you can trust God's word. You can trust the Bible. You can trust God uh, from the first verse to the last verse. Thanks, guys, for listening. Appreciate it.
Hello friends, Brian here out in God's creation. And uh, thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love to be able to share more of these creation evidences, evidences for God in the Bible from science that you really can trust Jesus is the real only hope that we can have in this life. Thanks.